Our today's topic of discussion is tear film and tear function. The tears can be adversely affected by the introduction of a contact lens to the ocular environment, leading to patient complaints of dryness. The volume of the tear fluid is approximately 7 microliters plus or minus 2, with 95% of the volume being produced by the lacrimal gland. Glands and cells of the lids and conjunctiva produce the rest of the components. 50% of the tear volume is located along the lid margin and is called the tear meniscus or lacrimal lake. The rest is spread over the cornea and conjunctival surfaces by the lids. The tears have a normal pH level of 7.3 and a salt concentration of 0.91 to 0.97%. Normal tear evaporation is approximately 1 to 2 microliters per minute 15% of the total volume per minute. The pre-corneal tear film has three layers, the oil layer, aqueous layer, and mucin layer. All three together are about 6 to 9 micrometers thick. The first outermost layer of the precorneal tear film is the lipid layer, produced by the mabomian glands and the accessory sebaceous glands of Zs, which are embedded in the superior and inferior lids. These glands secrete a partially solid oil and wax mixture. The gland openings are located on the lid margin anterior to the juncture of the conjunctiva and the epidermal layer of the lid. The lipids help stabilize the tear film and help prevent tear evaporation. If the spread of the lipid is insufficient, as is seen with surface elevations such as scars, pterygium, and pinguiculi, the overlying surface will be susceptible to dryness due to tear evaporation and secondary exposure. The optical quality of the eye is highly dependent on the integrity of the lipid layer. A depleted lipid layer will cause a disruption to the even spread of the tears and cause an irregularity in the precorneal surface. Such irregularities can cause power variations across the corneal surface, resulting in visual distortion. The lacrimal gland and the accessory glands of Krause and Wolfring produce the aqueous middle layer. This layer is composed of a complex series of salts, sugars, urea, and proteins. Lactoferrin, an iron-carrying protein similar to hemoglobin in the blood, supports oxygen transfer and demonstrates significant bacteria-inhibiting characteristics. The mucus layer is the thinnest, innermost layer. It is produced by the conjunctival goblet cells, and creates an interface between the aqueous layer and the corneal epithelium. The corneal epithelial surface is hydrophobic, water-fearing. The mucin layer reverses the hydrophobic characteristic of the epithelium to hydrophilic, water-loving. Mucin also reduces the friction between the palpebral conjunctiva and the corneal epithelium during the blink. The spread of the tear film over the cornea contact lens system is critical to the success of contact lens wear. The eyelids spread the tear film like a windshield wiper on the car. The motion of the upper lid sweeps the tears downward and medially while the lower lid sweeps the tears upward and medially. This motion spreads the tear film evenly over the cornea surface and forces it towards the puncta for drainage into the canaliculi. Blinking and spreading of the tear film is dramatically interrupted by the presence of a contact lens. The average blink rate is approximately 7 blinks per minute. This increases to approximately 18 to 20 blinks per minute with the initial insertion of the contact. Based on the comfort level of the patient and the contact lens material, the rate change may be even more dramatic. The effect is directly proportional to the material, such that polymethylmethacrylate PMMA hard, greater than rigid, silicone acrylate saw, greater than fluorinated silicone acrylate FSA greater than hydrophilic truncated greater than spherical. When the blink is altered, the blink rate becomes erratic and incomplete. This leads to a decrease in the proper spread of the tear film. This will cause subsequent lens dehydration and ocular discomfort. A contact lens also acts as a barrier to sensation, contributing to an incomplete blink. Essentially, the lid does not know whether or not it has completely closed due to the lack of feedback. Incomplete lid closure leads to superficial corneal and conjunctival staining. This may trigger the release of biochemicals that cause conjunctival swelling, chemosis, redness, injection, and discomfort.